Hey guys, Lady Liberty Stacker here. It is uh, Wednesday, January 27th, 2021. And you're looking at three skillets here. This is my Stargazer 12 inch. It's a, the, I think actually it's a 12 inch. And this one is a small logo Griswold number seven. It's my favorite pan for omelets and scrambled eggs and, and such. And this one is a little bit of a spinner. It's an unmarked Wagner. Uh, let's take a look at the other side, but it, it makes great turkey burgers and things of that nature. So tonight we're going to have turkey burgers and we're going to have potatoes uh, with a little bit of chopped up vegetables and I'm going to do them in here. Uh, and the reason why I'm, I'm actually doing this short video is to kind of let you know sometimes how you can fix seasoning issues when you're using your cast iron just by cooking more with your cast iron. Now this one here is a, uh, you know, I... I can't remember what I did last with this. I don't know if I made eggs with this or something, but you can see where it's hard to show in the light here. You can see a little bit of uh, discoloration along there where maybe some of the old seasoning came off. A lot of my earlier skillets, I, I used Crisco on them. So sometimes the seasoning didn't do a great job of holding up. Mind you, I have a lot of skillets, so I don't use one like repeatedly all the time. Uh, but this one I'm going to use for turkey burgers tonight, and I'm going to, um, you know, just by cooking in it, we'll get it blacker and shinier and all that. So I'm just going to remove that, but I wanted you to show this one because that's, one, that's what this one looked like. It doesn't now. It did this morning. And I just wiped it out. It was clean, and I thought, I'm going to go ahead and, and um, you know, I grilled up some ham and I did a fried egg and I made a breakfast sandwich with it and I sprayed avocado oil in here. It's just pure oil, no propellants, uh, non-GMO, uh, just very, very safe, you know, for my breakfast sandwich. So, you know, I heated it up and you can see here how nice it looks. It's hard to tell with the lights shining on it, but it's all even, all black, all shiny. And the back is nice too. So I'm going to put that one away. But just by cooking in it, got it to look where it should look. But before I cooked in it this morning, it looked like that. It looked like this one. So that's important. Now, I'm going to go ahead and put that one away. This one I'm going to use to make the fried potatoes. And I'm going to use, instead of the uh, high fat avocado oil, um, or high fat, it's actually uh, high in mono on uh, mono unsaturated fats. But anyway, I'm going to use some bacon grease, uh, and I'm going to heat this up medium high. Get the bacon grease nice and hot, and throw that in, and just go ahead and cook these things, and see if I can't get this looking better. Now, what caused this? I finally figured it out. It's a stargazer. I'm really not that crazy about the Stargazer. It doesn't seem to want to hold the seasoning real well. And you can see here, uh, I just made scrambled eggs with it. I've used it a couple of times. I think I made turkey burgers with it before. But, you know, when I re-season in the mini maintenance seasoning, when it, my stove actually has a new stove this year too, and I probably heated it up too high when I put on my maintenance oil, I first start you know, using the puck and putting it on here, it carbonizes almost immediately. So that's something I don't like about the Stargazer. I do the same thing with my other skillets. And you can see here, that doesn't happen. Same exact thing. And that's with the, um, the pucks from, that you get from uh, Buzzy Wax. And I don't, actually I don't recommend using those for uh, mini seasoning. It's, you, you can't put seasoning on a skillet that's already between 350 and 400 degrees. It will carbonize almost immediately. So that's where this is from. Well, I really don't want to strip it again and start all over. So we're going to continue to cook with it. So I'm going to go ahead and do my potatoes in here. And we're going to see what it looks like after I'm done. And, you know, the, some of these things I'm finding as I cook with different kinds of pans. But I will be back and I will show you what it looks like you know, during the cooking phase and once we're done. So anyhow, I am fine. I had just been busy with some other personal things I've had to attend to. Some people have emailed me and want to know if I'm okay. Everything's fine. Just been busy with just life, everything. 
So anyhow, I will be back and show you the results of what we can do with this one. Hey guys, here are the potatoes and you can tell they're non-stick, they're pretty done. Um, we like them kind of crispy and well done. As you can see, the bottom, you won't be able to tell too much until this is cleaned, but I wonder if it'll look more uniform. So we'll see. That's potatoes, and then this is the other skillet that I was going to do the turkey burgers in. I do have a recipe, so you want to check the recipes for that if you want the turkey burger recipe. And uh, I'll be back to show you what these look like uh, after they, or, or this one, after it's uh, ready to be cleaned. Okay, guys, I am back. It's after dinner. Uh, this one kind of stuck a little bit uh, just because I charboiled the uh, turkey burgers. Uh, they didn't stick badly, but you can see all the residue on there, and, and so we're going to try to clean this up, and we're going to go ahead and put water, warm water in, just soak it for a little while. You can soak it probably for up to an hour. I've soaked them up to overnight before, and nothing drastic happens, but we're going to go ahead, <laughs> excuse me, <coughs> we're going to go ahead and soak it. We're going to soak this one, too. It's warm water, and we're going to try to just let it soak. Loosen up the bits. I'm going to get them off, and for anything that doesn't come off, there is a solution. Uh, so you don't have to totally strip it and re-season. So I will be back at that stage of the uh, video. Okay, guys, it's the next day, and I've let these soak overnight, which I do not recommend doing, but the particles were so burnt onto these pans. And sometimes you're going to get this when you cook certain things in cast iron. So... Uh, this video is basically meant to show you how to get it looking de decent and ready for the next meal. So I've soaked this overnight, and you can see it looks like it rusted up a little bit. So we, I'm going to put my camera down here so you can kind of see what I'm doing. Try to get it angled so you can see it here and we're gonna take a uh, non-abrasive scrub pad I'm gonna use this and we're just going to it just kind of comes right up but you don't want to do this as a general rule because it will have your your cast iron rust you don't want to do that so uh, we got that one up and you can't see the other side. I'll go ahead and move it over so you can see the other pan here. And starting to rust. So we still have some particles on the bottom that are burnt on. So when this first happened to me, I really didn't know uh, what to do about it. So the thing to do about it is to bring this to a boil and it will help boil some of those off. So you want to do that, bring it to a boil, and then let it steam for, or boil for a couple of minutes. And then you want to try to scrub it off, and then you can take kosher salt with a paper towel. And then it will bring up the particles that have loosened from the surface of the skillet. And then you can uh, mini season again to get your skillet ready for next time. So we're going to go ahead and do that. We're going to put this on high. Not high. Actually, I'm going to put it on medium here because you don't want to put your ever put your cast iron on high. And we're going to do it on medium here and just let it start to cook. So I will be back once it shows you what what it looks like once it starts to boil. I'll be back. This, guys, is what it looks like when it gets boiling really good. And this one happened a lot quicker because it's a smaller pan and heats up more quickly. This one is starting to steam a little bit, but nothing major is happening with this one yet. So we're going to go ahead and do this. And some of the loose particles are coming up. And it's actually steaming my camera. <laughs> so I'll wipe that, that off. We're going to let it go for about another minute or so. And I will be back to show you what it looks like when uh, cleaning this up with kosher salt and a pad. 
Hey guys, uh, we boiled it out and we're going to see how much of the uh, black stuff comes off, black gunk that uh, got onto the skillet. And we're going to do it this way just to get it off. And now this is where the kosher salt comes into play. And believe it or not, there's not a lot of videos uh, out there how to do this. So I'm going to go ahead and sprinkle on some kosher salt. Take a paper towel. And your pan will still be hot at this point, but see it comes off on the paper towel. And the whole idea is you don't want to re-season this again, but you want to get it nice and smooth and ready to cook the next time. And what you're taking off isn't seasoning, it's just what has cooked on to the surface of your pan. And when you do meat sometimes like this, you'll get this. And the first time this happened to me, look at that. That's just the charred meat that is coming off. The skillet. And when we're done with this, we're just going to do a mini re-seasoning once again to get it good and ready for next time. And it's nice and smooth again. It feels nice and smooth. Okay, we're going to rinse it off. You want to make sure your water is the same temperature as your skillet. I'm getting it. Still, it is still warm. We want warm water. I want to keep the temperatures pretty much the same. It feels fairly smooth. And sometimes you'll have to go back and do this two or three times the things are really stuck on there and it looks like it's going to be okay again this isn't a, a collectible skillet I just use it for you know cooking burgers and things of that nature okay it's relatively smooth and ready to go we're going to go ahead and wipe it off again with our towel It'll be all ready to mini season. We're going to do the same thing with the other skillet, and I will be back. Hey guys, I am back. Um, cleaned everything out and made sure that things were very smooth on the cooking surface. Now I'm going to turn it up. I'm going to do it on medium low this time. This stove heats up really, really um, high. And I have it for a couple of minutes. This one will take a little bit longer. But everything's nice and smooth on the bottom. Now we need to do a mini seasoning here. You can see um, some of that is newer from the cooking process. What was in the middle, all squiggly in the middle, seems to have pretty much loosened and I was able to take it off with the kosher salt so that was seasoning that wasn't entirely carbonized but it looked terrible it's just I've never gotten this result before from any other type of skillet it's a stargazer skillet I mean it seems to cook okay but I'm not entirely uh, satisfied with how it holds seasoning even though I did season it with both Buzzy Wax and Easy Beasy seasoning stick so 
And now that I have them, I will just continue to cook with them, and I'm sure they'll be fine. But if I had it to do over again, knowing what I know now, probably wouldn't have purchased them. So that's just me. Uh, I still like the vintage cast iron and the new Wagner pan that I picked up for myself that has a teeny, teeny, tiny little crack in the pour spout will probably suffice as my big pan when I need to do potatoes or roasted vegetables or something of that nature. But at any rate, this is what we have. So we're just going to do a little bit of, I've got uh, some Crisco on here. And we're going to go ahead and put it on here. Wipe it on <coughs> really well. Excuse me. Wipe it on really well. And this one's a little warped. That's why I use it for burgers and such. And I'm going to wipe it off again. I'm going to do the other side. This one's light enough that I can do holding it in my hand. You probably can't see it right now because of where the camera is, but we're going to let it bake on there for about four minutes. You want to let it bake on there until at least it starts to smoke. And this one is probably warm enough now where we can uh, spread on I'm doing Crisco right now just because it's convenient and it's right here on my stovetop. We're going to get this thing back. I probably could stick it in and throw another layer of seasoning on it, but the whole idea is you don't have to strip it again. Uh, you can do a mini seasoning. You can do a variety of things. Or just throw it in. If you are baking something in the oven that's going to be in there long enough to season it, you could do that. Or if you're seasoning other skillets, just throw the one that needs a new coat in the oven as well. And there's no harm in that. You might as well make use of your oven. And that way you spread it on here where it's all nice and even. Um, I don't recommend the seasoning stick for mini maintenance. You want to make sure it's on an infused rag. And unless you want to use it with the rag, that's fine. But it's when it's so warm like that, it's going to carbonize. Let me turn it over. That's very heavy. So we're going to do the bottom side. We're going to get that looking good as well. don't want it to rust, so you want to do the whole thing. Of course, this part didn't have any water in it overnight, but it just doesn't hold seasoning the way my other vintage skillets do. It's just not, not the same. So... But this is a quick maintenance tip as far as how to get gunk off your cast iron. There we go. We're going to let that go. This one's starting to caramelize, so we want to make sure that we turn off the burner. We need a new towel. I use the shop vac. Or not shop vac shop towels and they are wonderful for being lint free you can see how it's going so it's nice and smooth again and with use um, you know, you can add more seasoning over time, mini seasonings over time, and continue to cook with it. It'll be fine. I hadn't cooked with either one of these skillets that much. So, again, it is... It's 
smoking. So that one should be ready to go for next time. And now we're going to focus our attention on this one. And right now it's not doing a whole heck of a lot. Should just be baking on there. I'm going to turn it up just a little bit. You don't want to have this one, the stargazer, too hot because it does funky things with the mini seasonings when you try to do that. It just, I can feel the heat already increased. But you can see how it looks. more even. And I think we'll do one more coat. Just one more. Get it on there before it can uh, caramelize in one spot. You want to spread it out. I turned up the heat. I'm giving you guys uh, trips and ticks because tricks and tips. <laughs> Because there's not that many videos on YouTube about this kind of stuff. And this is, if you're going to be cooking with it, you are going to be using your cast iron. And you want to make sure to get it where you can manage it. Or what to do if you run into a situation. So, added another layer. It's starting to smoke. And we're going to wait until it smokes a little bit more. And then we're going to wipe off the excess. We just want to make sure that it doesn't rust. It doesn't look super pretty right now, but we don't want it to rust. So we're going to let it uh, do that for a minute or so. And we'll be back to... Okay guys, I am back. It's the 29th Friday of January. And I've gotten the skillets cleaned and mini seasoned. And as you can tell, the, the really ugly carbonized seasoning was removed. Of course, when I mini seasoned it again, it kind of did that. So what you have to do with this one is do a spray either like this, a Grill Master seasoning spray. It's got, uh, it's actually got, well, this one is probably the best one to use. I use that one for flash rust. It would be this one to use. It has a high smoke point, so you can put it at like medium. Heat it up to medium and then put it on there and then just let it cook on there for a little bit. Uh, this one, uh, you spray it. covers it all at once because if you use anything else like a puck uh, or a seasoning stick like this, whatever hits the skillet first is going to start carbonizing and you have that uneven look. You don't want that, so you definitely want to use a spray. That's with the Stargazer. And, uh, but it did come out a little bit better, but you have to cook with it. And I'm going to set this down. And we're going to put it down. You can see it there. I'm going to turn it over. And you can see the back looks a lot better after the mini seasoning. I'm not sure why the discoloration there. Maybe it was just something that was on the stove from before when I was cooking this. But uh, this one here looks pretty good, too. Uh, this one, I had to actually uh, cook it or boil it one more time and do another um, uh, kosher salt treatment on it to get uh, the hard surfaces off. Um, oops, that was lint. <laughs> but anyways, um, this one, they're both ready to cook again, but you have to cook in them. I'm going to do bacon, regular pig's bacon in that one. And then this one... <clears throat> I'm just going to do a breakfast sandwich for my husband, and it's perfectly good to cook. It still has a little bit of the side on there um, from before. I'm just going to have to continue cooking with it. And basically using the sprays like that for even coverage, that's probably the most important thing. But you can tell there that it's nice and smooth. It doesn't look as nice as the Griswold, but it's still is my uh, go-to cooker. So I'm going to go ahead and put this down and show you how I'm going to do the egg. Just showing you that it's still non-stick. So we're going to go ahead and do that. Even coverage. This is avocado oil. Pure avocado oil. And we're going to go ahead and put 
egg in there. We're also going to make, uh, at the same time the skillet is heated, I cut three sausages in half. We're going to put this instead of ham on the Egg McMuffin. So put them there. Let it cook up a little bit. And you don't want to try to flip that until it bubbles up quite a bit. You want it to release from the skillet. And I will be back once we're ready to do that. Okay, guys. <clears throat> uh, this egg is pretty much uh, ready to go. You can see it's nonstick. Um, I've got a uh, heat resistant spatula and these things are great. Um, I also have a wooden scraper to help scrape off the any residue from the pan after doing meat and such. Uh, two great tools when you uh, cook with cast iron. So we're going to go ahead and, well, you can't see it there. I'll turn it around once it goes on the sandwich. See, it comes right off. And get that off of there. We're still cooking this up. Uh, these are sausages. I got them at Costco. These are actually have a little bit of maple syrup in them. They're pretty good. I'm going to finish these guys up. And you can see just by cooking with it's going to get blacker and blacker over time. I wouldn't use a super collectible one this way um, if you like the way they look. Unless uh, you have one that has a lot of use to it and a lot of layers of seasoning built up. But that's pretty much um, how to get them back to usability. Um, make sure they're smooth, non-stick. They may not look super pretty, but they look a heck of a lot better than when you got, got done cooking your last meal. All right, guys, uh, that's about it. Um, go ahead and give me a thumb up. If you'd like to see videos like this, leave a comment or question below. Thanks, Ed. Go make it a great day. Okay, guys, we're back. Since we cleaned up right after the meal, just took the wooden... Uh, wooden um, I don't know if you call it a fork or a spoon, but a wooden spatula, I guess that's the best uh, term. Just uh, ran some warm water over the skillet, ran that over it, took an unabrasive sponge, and just wiped it down, and we're ready to go for the next time. You can see how nice it looks. You still have a little bit on the sides there, but it looks decent. It's ready to cook for the next meal, and that's all you really want from your go-to cast iron. This one will try grilled tuna melts tonight on this one to see how um, smooth that one is but again that looks even more uniform now than before I showed you the video so hopefully we can get the same look with this again you probably should need to use a spray like a uh, non-stick spray uh, or you want to use butter that's fine too but I butter my toast all right I'll be back later but this is it for now again leave a thumb up leave a comment or question below Please hit the subscribe button if you haven't already. It really helps the channel. Thanks for watching, guys, and go make it a great day.